Hello, it's me again. Um, for, the, for those of you that are using the CTrader harmonic scanning tool, which is what you're seeing on the chart now with CTrader, um, some of the customers have actually requested that we give some kind of interface so that you could access the signals for when a pattern is formed and implement that into our own automated trading systems or CBOTs so you can trade off them automatically. Um, as it stands, the patterns, the uh, tool is very good if you stand in front of the charts. So when a pattern forms like you've got here, it's got a bullish pattern. Um, you really want to trade on that automatically so you don't have to spend 24 hours staring at the charts, waiting for the patterns to form and integrate that with your other trading strategies. So the whole idea is we've created a assembly. It's a, like a client, um, a client utility um, that you can attach. It's like a DLL dynamic um, library that you can attach to your project and implement the code so you can do what you want with the uh, signals. So it might be something like you've got a complex strategy and you also want to utilize the harmonic patterns in there and you want to access those signals. Okay, I've probably gone a bit too long there. So this is the harmonic scatten, sorry, <laughs> harmonic pattern scanning tool you're seeing in front of you there. Now, if I go to the scanning window, every time a pattern forms, it puts it in this list here. Okay, it puts the newest one at the top. So there's been all of these patterns that have formed recently. I've reduced the accuracy down so that we get some um, values. And I'll show you how to do that. If I just went to settings, the accuracy set at 70%. Okay, so it's very low. This is just for demonstration purposes. So if I go back to the scanning window. So as you can see, there's each one of these that have been um, created for the USD, JPY, GBP, USD, and Euro, USD. Okay, now if you look on there, there's two for Euro, USD. Both with one at 73% accuracy when it's 76 and it's also got the time that the, the date time they were formed which is 26 the second uh 26 to a couple of uh, yesterday actually at 2 p.m okay so that's it i just want to show you that and what i'm also going to show you now is where it actually puts this information so if i scroll this across now the information that you get uh, for the scan results just goes into an xml file so that scan window that you saw previously, that is just the um, values that are being taken from this XML file. So if I open up the XML file in Notepad, and you can see the values in here, okay? Now, what the assembly utility does, which I'll go into in a minute, it actually just gives you an object, a list of these patterns. So that's one pattern, and it will give you a collection of each one of these that you can iterate through and access any one of these values. So you can access pattern name, direction, symbol, time frame, date form, trustworthiness, and accuracy. So you can use these values in your trading system or even an additional indicator. So you can have a custom indicator that you want to use these values. So when a pattern forms now, you can um, use this tool to access this information to do anything you want to do in your automated trading systems. Okay. So that's that. And what I'm going to do now is go into um, C Trader. Oops, wrong one. I want to go here. And I'm going to go to the automate window. OK, so this is the automate window. Now, um, what we've done here is we've created a client example. So we're going to give you the source code so you'll have access to it. Um, there'll be a web page that you can use as well. So this is just example source code of how to access the utility tool and how to actually um, submit orders. So as you saw previously, you had uh, two Euro USD um, orders in there. So if I just Change this template quickly. Now, if I click play here, oh, I'll just open up the order window first. Oh, sorry, I'm debugging. I must just go through it while I'm at it, okay? So what I've done, sorry, it's already gone into my debug mode. So I'm just gonna stop that again and actually go through. It might be easier if I do this actually. Yeah, sorry about that. So what I'm gonna do is go back to Ctrade and I'm gonna stop this. So it's created two order fields. That's ruined my little demonstration there. Never mind. So the whole idea is it just opened up two orders. Those two Euro USD um, values that you saw in those XML files, it found them and executed the orders and it's opened those orders. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do now is go through the code and show you how that all works. So you can, all right, okay, that's what I'll do. So what I'm going to do is go back to uh, the source code you have here. Okay. So when you first come into this, this is what you'll see. You'll see the source code for CTrader. Now I'm going to do the demonstration in Visual Studio. So if you're not using Visual Studio, you can still use this. And I'll just quickly tell you how to attach the assembly, how to reference it onto your CBOT project. So this is a demonstration CBOT project. You just go to Manage References and you go to Libraries 
and we've got our one here it's called Clicago harmonic client now you'll download this it's free of charge you'll download this and just add this reference to your C trader um, project and apply it and it will actually allow you then to use this code and actually um, use it in your CBOT to submit orders when the signals occur, when the harmonic patterns are formed. So what I would prefer to do is just to show you the demonstration in Visual Studio, because I can step through the code and show you exactly what's going on. Okay, it'd be much easier for you to see. So I'm gonna open this with Visual Studio. If you were gonna do it, you would just right click on the project and you would go edit in Visual Studio. Because I've got it already open, I'm just gonna come up and show you it on the screen. This is what you'll see when you open up Visual Studio, you'll see the project like this, okay? So I just get rid of this breakpoint. So what I've done, I've saturated it with comments to help you understand exactly what's going on. So again, this is just example code, how to use the client reference or the client assembly to actually um, submit orders with your automated trading system. So if you're using Visual Studio, you would just right click, add reference and find this file here. And this is the, the main file you wanna find and put into your project, okay? So what I'll do, I'll do a code walkthrough from the top to the bottom and I'll explain it to you. And then I'll um, debug and run through and step through each code as it's actually operating in real time, okay? So at the top here, you need to include both of these using statements. So you need to include clickalgo.harmonic, which is a reference to that assembly you saw here and using clickalgo.harmonics.scanner. You need both of those at the top. You just need these three, three lines for this example. So it's important that file system access required. So you need to have file system um, access rights because it's gonna read the XML file. Okay, that's all you need. And it shows you here where to access the file, where it's located. Okay, so down here, you just wanna declare your class-wide harmonic scanner interface that we're using, it's called client. Um, and then on start, you just want to initialize that um, harmonic client, which is client equals new client. It's pretty straightforward. Now, what I've done is I've just put this bit of code in here called on bar. And um, that's so it calls the on bar method automatically. So I don't have to wait on a one minute time frame. I would have to wait one minute. So I'm automatically calling that method to execute this code for just, just for this demonstration. And if you're going to implement this into your automated trading systems, I wouldn't do it every tick. I would consider maybe a timer so that, um, you know, every minute it checks the file to see if a signal's come in. There are various ways of doing it, but this, this um, it's out of, scope, out of the scope of this demonstration. But you can implement this any way you want. Because it's on bar, it means that every time the candle closes, that method gets called, and that's when it will check for patterns. Okay, so... What will happen when I click um, start or I run the CBOT, it will automatically call the on bar method. It will actually say, get all the patterns filtered by this symbol name, Euro USD. Now, if you wanted to use it for the actual symbol for the CBOT that you're using, you would just put um, symbol name. So if your CBOT that you're using in CTrader is Euro GBP, if you use symbol name, it will automatically pick up Euro GBP. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this demonstration is just leave that at Euro USD. So you can also put anything in there. You can put um, any symbol in there. So it gives you a bit more flexibility. So what we've done with the interface is we've brought back all the patterns either by symbol. So if you put the uh, symbol name in there, you'll only get the patterns for that symbol. But also, if you put uh, no parameter, it will actually bring back all the symbols. It's just an overloaded function that allow you to actually bring, out, bring back all the symbols, not filtered by symbol name, okay? But I'm just gonna do filtered by symbol name today. So if the pattern is null, if there's nothing found, it just returns out of the bar. You wanna do that, you don't, it'll probably error out, I think, if you go through it through there. So what happens here is it'll iterate through each pattern that it's found, okay? For each pattern in patterns. And you can then start using the properties um, inside the object that you've populated from that XML file. So in this case, if I put dot, you've got accuracy of the pattern, the date form, the direction of the pattern, you've got the pattern name, the symbol, how long ago, uh, time ago, and the time frame of the pattern that was formed, and you've got trustworthiness, okay? So what we were using just then was the accuracy. So I'm gonna say any pattern that's formed that's above 50% accuracy, I put 95 at the top, but I'll just change that to 50. So really you want it a bit higher than obviously 50%. This is just for demonstration. You probably want it at like 95% or something. But it just goes to show that you can use all the properties in the object to cater, you know, kind of to custom your own system. It gives you a bit more flexibility. 
So if it's above 50%, it will then submit an order. It passes in the pattern object, which comes down to this method here, receives the pattern object. It then just says uh, default the trade type to buy. If the direction of the pattern is sell, then it sets the trade type to sell. So it's just saying what is the what is the direction or trade type of this pattern uh, coming in for this trade. Then what it does, it says um, this is important. If you didn't have this block of code here, it would every time that method gets called like the on bar, or however you're going to actually call it, it will create a new order like duplicate orders. So how do you prevent duplicate orders? Well, what you do is when you execute the market order, you set the label as the date formed. Now the date formed of the pattern is the date and the time. Now for that symbol, you're very, you probably will never have two patterns form at the same time, at the same hour and at the same minute. So it's very unique value and you should never get duplicates. Put this bit of code in, it just says, it calls another method orders, if the order exists, passing in the date formed string. And down here, it just checks, uh, it searches positions to say, does this position, does a position with this label exist that's called date formed? So is there a position out there with got a, date, a label of the date, hour and time? If it is, then it will just returns out, it won't submit the order. If it doesn't exist, then it'll execute the market order, passing in the type, the pattern symbol, which is got, which we received from the XML file, the volume, which is an example, 1000, and the actual pattern form date as a string. Okay, that's it, it's pretty straightforward. So in a nutshell, what they will, this will do, this will get either all the patterns that you see, that you saw in that XML file or the scanning window, and it will actually iterate through them and just say, I want all the patterns, in this case for the euro dollar, that's got an accuracy of above 50%, I want to submit orders. That's it, there you go. So what I'm going to do now is just give you a running example of this working, stepping through the code, doing a code walkthrough. Um, but before I do, I'm going to go back here, I'm going back to trade, and I'm going to show you again the scanning window. So all of the values that get populated into the object is, come, is the same data that's being shown in here. And all this data in here is that XML file that I showed you um, previously is where it's coming from, okay? So if I exit out there, I'll go back to automate. Now what I'm gonna do now is go back to the code window and I'm gonna put a breakpoint on bar here where it gets called. And then you make sure you build it. And you also make sure that your, um, let me finish that build that your configuration manager is debug. Right. All you do then is you go under the debug tab at the top, attach to process, find C Trader, attach that. Once it's attached, you then just go back to your uh, C Trader and you click start. Now that automatically hits the breakpoint in your source code in Visual Studio. Now, if you're doing complex projects, you really, really want to be doing it this way because this allows you to step through the code, look at the values, and identify fast, quickly, exactly where the errors are occurring and where the problem is, okay? Without this, you'll just be banging your head against a wall forever trying to work out what's going on. So now, first of all, what it's going to do now is call the client object and get all patterns filtered by that symbol name. So I'm going to actually step through by pressing F10. F10 step through there and it's populated that object. How do I know? If I put the mouse over it, it's got a count of two and it's a list of objects and you can see the objects have been populated. It's got an accuracy of 76, a date formed of 6th of the 2nd, 2020, 6 in the morning. So bullish shark, Euro USD, 20 days ago, time frame one hour, trustworthiness insufficient. That's the first one. If I go down to the second one, and that's the second one, a bearish shark, Euro USD. Uh, direction bearish, right? I've just found a bug in my code, which I will fix right now, actually. Okay, so there you go. So that does that. Now we've got the object. Now what it's gonna do now is it's gonna say if there's no patterns, we return out, but there are patterns. So I'll step through again. I click press an F10, it iterates through. And pattern accuracy, which is 76, is greater than 50, submit new order. I press F11 to go into a new method. Um, step through again. Now you'll see the error I got there is where the, the direction of the pattern is bullish. I put sell. So I just need to change this to say bullish or bearish and it will actually do the correct one. So what I'm going to do is not do that. Let's actually field those. I'm just going to go back here and just quickly fix it while you're, while you're online actually. Sorry about that. So what I'm going to do is just close these orders. <clears throat> close 
close all the positions, go back to the code window. And what I'm going to do is change this to bearish. And then I'm going to rebuild. <clears throat> okay, it's rebuilt. Now when I go to debug, I don't need to attach the process again. I can just do reattach the process. Okay, I go back to C Trader. I click the play button and it's stepping through again. Now I'm going to step through again. Go to submit order, press F11. Now I go into submit order. If the direction is bullish, it will stay as buy. So this one's bullish. Um, if the order already exists, it will just exit out, but it doesn't exist. Then it's going to submit the order. And you can see the top right submitted the order. If I press F10 and follow it through again, press F11 to step through, all the same one. And I've got to step through again, F11, come back down again. Now the direction should be bearish. It should match this um, comparison there. And it's now a sell, a sell order. Order exists, no, execute market order, yes. And that's the end of it. Now you'll see down at the bottom, it's created a buy and a sell, Euro USD, two orders, okay? Now, if you have a look at the um, label, it actually shows the label, which is the date of when the pattern was formed. I'll just quickly show you that now, just to recap, and then that, this video will be done, I think. So where do I need to go? I need to go here, I was there. Trade, if I go to scanner, there are the two, if I, filter by symbol you've got the two euro usd uh, values at the top one's 26 of the second six o'clock the other one's 26 of the second four o'clock and these are the two values that it found you can also just click on this link here and all that to automatically go to the chart and scan it automatically and show you it okay, it's pretty clever so that's it that's how to use the um c trader a, a harmonic pattern scanning api assembly to integrate into your automated trading systems that you can use um, to create your own trading robots, really. I'll just go to the code and just see if there's anything else that I've missed out. So that's it. Um, again, you can use this with, oh, I need to stop debugging. You can use this with, um, in this reference, it's obviously a automated trading system, but you can use this in an indicator as well. But um, we hope that you found it useful. Again, if you do get stuck trying to implement it, please use our custom development service. So just give us a call or send us an email at development at clickargo.com and we will help you implement this into your own trading system. Okay. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up at the bottom. Thank you very much.